is Miss Janelle from the Ella Johnson Library, and today for Art Explorers, we are going to talk a little bit about bookbinding and comic books. Do you guys like comic books? I really like comic books. So we are first going to start with bookbinding. In your kit that you got from the library, you should have paper for the pages of your book, a thicker kind of cardstock paper for the cover and back cover, some nice colorful string, a plastic needle, and a safety pin. You will also need a ruler if you'd like, a pair of scissors, and I have an extra handy tool. So this is a wooden stick that's going to help me crease the pages. When you do book binding, they are made out of bone and they're really heavy and they help you to get a nice flat crease so that when we put our book together, it's not really, really big and thick. It's nice and compact and uniform. So I'll be using that as well today. In traditional book binding, they would have a pointed metal tool that would help you pierce the pages to create holes so that you can bind it with thread. So for that, we're going to be using our safety pin and then threading it through with our plastic needles. Just a little bit safer tools for us to use. Now, book binding is pretty fun. And there's lots and lots and lots of ways that you can bind your books together. I'm sure you've seen books that have glue. I'm sure you've seen books that have had thread. So we're going to do a thread method because that's the most fun. So we have all of our pages here. We have quite a few. And we're going to stack them all up on top of each other. And then we're going to fold them in half. Now we are doing what's called a single sheet one leaf, which means when you take a single piece of paper and you fold it in half, you're creating two pages like that. So we have that. Now I'm going to take my handy tool. You can do this with your fingernail as well, credit card, whatever you have on hand. And we're going to crease really, really hard so that we can make sure our pages stay nice and tight together. Alrighty. See how thin that made it by using that tool? It's very even. We don't have to worry about anything slipping out of anything. All right, so now we're going to open this up and we're going to start creating the holes that we want. I am going to leave the cover for right now because we're going to talk a about what you can do with the cover. So for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a saddle stitch, and I'll show you what that means. But first, we need to poke our holes. So we're going to poke some here and here, here, and here. And we want to make sure we go all the way through the pages, like so. And if you want to measure it so that it's exactly the same on both sides, you definitely can do that. I kind of eyeballed it. I've done this before. So for me, it's pretty easy. If you have a little trouble poking it through, ask help for a parent or guardian. Now, we have our little hole started. We want to try and get it a little bit bigger to fit our needle through. So this is where it might take a little bit of pushing. So I'm going to go ahead and make my hole a little bit bigger. Now those sharp tools I was talking about that bookbinders have, this does the trick real easy peasy. And you can stick it in at different lengths to create different size holes. So that's a little bit easier. But we're using a method that's a little bit less expensive and a little bit easier for you to do. I think we need to open that hole up a little bit more. There we go. Perfect. So we have our holes. They're nice and big. Now we're going to take our string and we're going to bind this book together. Now I pulled out enough for quite a while book, but we want to make sure that we have extra. Now, let's make sure we put that through there. I'm not going to tie it, but you can if you'd like. I'm just going to hold on to it. And we are going to start on the inside of the book. So 
So we're going to poke it through. Like so. I'm going to flip it over so you can see. Then we're going to go outside like that. And then I'm going to pull it through. So it looks like that. And I'm going to flip this over again. We're going to go across and into this hole. Kind of like how you weave. And we're going to go through, pull all the way, make it tight. Flip that back over. And we're going to push it back through this hole. Like so. So the outside of the binding will look like this. And the inside of the binding will look like that. So I'm going to release my needle here. Now this is the fun part. Now you're going to tie it, but you don't want to tie it too tight to rip it, but you want to tie it tight enough so it stays all together. So we are going to go ahead and tie our little knot here, like that. And you want a knot, you don't want a bow, because we want to make sure that our pages are flat. Perfect. I'm going to cut this. So that's the inside binding of our pages. I'm going to flip it here. And there we go. We bound all of our pages together so it won't slide out of our book. Now, you can see it looks really nice. You got that nice binding, colorful binding on the inside here. Now the option you have is you can put the cover on and poke holes through it so that this shows on the outside binding of your cover. Or what most book binders do is they actually glue the cover to an interior sheet. So that's what I'm going to do. I mean, I want my book to be a little bit more professional. So I've got a trusty glue stick here. If you have a glue stick, you can do this too. Or like I said, you can bind it all the way across. And you just want glue on the middle. You don't want to go all the way to the edges because our paper is actually a little bit smaller. What I'm going to do is I'm going to snug it up to that middle section. I'm going to press. So I'll have one sheet attached to the cover of the front and one sheet attached to the cover of the back, just like that. Look at that. Beautiful. You made a great book. Now, we're going to take the books that we just made and we're going to turn it into a super awesome, fun, amazing comic book. First, I want to show you my favorite comics right now. I love me some Narwhal and Jelly and the bad guys. They are amazing. I highly suggest you read them. Now Narwhal and Jelly is a little bit simpler of a comic book and I'll show you what I mean by that. So in comic books we break the story up with pictures and just a little bit of text into these boxes called panels. So they use these panels to kind of help create the story in a way so you're concentrating on one thing at a time and usually there's not too much text in each one of the panels. Now, when the panel is the whole page, like this one right here, that is called a splash page. So you're taking all the information of one panel and putting it into one whole page. Now the funny thing about comic books is it's usually lots and lots and lots of people working on them. So you have the penciler, which is the person who sketches the comic book in pencil. Then you have the inker who comes through and does all the fun, dark black lines. And they're the one that helps outline each panel. Then you have the colorist, which obviously they're doing all the coloring, kind of like a coloring book. They're filling in all that fun color. This one doesn't have a whole lot of color in it, but they would come in through, put the blue in for the jellyfish. Then you have the letterer, which sounds like a made up name, 
but that's the person who comes through and puts all the words of the text in the comic book. So you have so many people working on that. And you also have the person who writes it. So that's a lot of people working on the comic book. So it might be really fun if you have um, a sibling or a parent or guardian in your house or a friend that you are able to see if you both put together the comic book. You can take turns, have one person pencil, one person do the ink, one person do the color, and one person do the letters. That might be really, really fun. The other comic book I like is Bad Guys. Now they have a lot more panels in it. And if you ever see the comic books for teenagers or manga or adult comic books, they have tons and tons and tons and tons of panels. So for our story, your comic book, I would suggest doing just a couple panels. When you are doing panels in your comic book, you want to think about how you want the story to go. So usually what people will do is they'll do a storyboard first. They'll create the characters, they'll think about what kind of story they want to tell, and they'll write that all out, and then they start working on how they want that comic book set up. So think about the characters. For this comic book, we have, obviously, all the bad guys. For Narwhal and Jelly, we have Narwhal, Jelly, and Otter. Maybe a couple other jellyfish in there, too. But not a whole lot of characters. And the stories are really simple. In this one, they're talking about how Narwhal makes a friend with Otter. In this one, they're solving a case of furball. So, when you're creating your comic book, think about how many characters you want and what kind of adventure you want them to go on. Do you want it to be fun? Do you want it to be silly? Do you want it to be serious? And then, once you have all of that figured out, you're going to start making your comic book. I like to start with my front cover. I know what I want my story to be about. I want my story to be about my dog, Hans, who's the coolest wiener dog ever. I would make the cover all about my dog. Put him in the front, title page, and then what kind of story do we want to tell? Hmm, let's see. Hans is on the hunt for the lost bone. So Hans is going to be looking for his lost bone. In the first part of your comic book, you want to kind of introduce your characters. So in Narwhal and Jelly, we have all the characters introduced here. We have Narwhal, we have Otter, and then the next page we have Jelly. So we want to make sure we're introducing our characters right off the bat. And then you kind of want to build up the suspense in the next two pages. What is that story going to be about? So after you kind of introduce your characters, in the next two pages, talk about how we're going to get those characters into the story. What are we going to do? And then we're going to have the climax of the story is where all these things are happening. They could be good. They could be bad. It's totally up to you. Climax of this story is that Narwhal is jealous of Otter. He, or er, uh, Jelly is jealous of Otter because he's best friends with Narwhal. So we have the climax of the story being the jealous jellyfish. And then we realize that it's okay to have other friends besides your best friend. And then everybody's friends in the end. So in my story, I would have Hans realizing his bone was gone, then maybe asking around, seeing if anyone has seen his bone, and then the end of the story, he would find his bone. So, think about what you want your comic book to be about. Maybe put yourself in it, or your family, or your dog or pet, and then create a way. After you're done, go ahead and take a picture and send it to us. We'd love to see what kind of comic book you've created. I hope you guys enjoyed this Art Explorers. I know I did. And I hope to see you guys really soon at the library. And make sure you keep an eye out for the next episode. We have lots of fun stuff online coming up. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.